Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the undergraduate webinar series, an interactive online platform connecting high school students to the Ashokan community. In this series, we aim to cover topics that are related to Ashoka's undergraduate program. Our esteemed faculty will guide you in understanding various aspects of the university, including the academics, admissions, financial aid, the career opportunities, as well as campus life that you can find here. The recordings of the previous sessions are all available on Ashoka's YouTube channel, the link to which is provided in the chat box. I'm Trisha Sopti from the graduate batch of 2020. I completed my major in economics and finance, and I'm currently pursuing a minor in entrepreneurial strategy and leadership. Thank you for joining us for today's session. Why study entrepreneurship at Ashoka? Feel free to post any questions that you may have through the session in the Q&A chat box. We will be taking them up together towards the end of the session. Before we begin our session, I'd like to introduce our speaker for today, Dr. Priyank Narayan, who is the head of the Department of Entrepreneurship and the director of the Center of Entrepreneurship at Ashoka University. A PhD from IIT Delhi, Dr. Priyank is a seasoned entrepreneur and an educationist who brings with him rich experience in organization building. He is also the founder of Indiapreneurship, an organization that is focused on showcasing the entrepreneurial opportunities in India to the world. He mentors startups both in India as well as abroad. Dr. Priyank is also visiting faculty at IIT Delhi in their Department of Management Studies. An alumnus of AIM Manila and IIM Ahmedabad, Dr. Priyank is an avid golfer and a licensed scuba diver. He's also trained in Indian classical music. So without further ado, over to you, Dr. Priyank. Thank you, Tusha. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, welcome to this session on why I study entrepreneurship at Ashoka. And I'm delighted that uh, you have uh, planned to spend your evening trying to understand the creative things that we do at our university. So um, we have an exciting lineup for you for the next about half an hour, 45 minutes, and then we are open to questions. Um, uh, I'll run you through a little bit of what we do at Ashoka, what's, uh, what's entrepreneurship in a liberal arts environment that we are trying to um, deliver at Ashoka. And then we'll also hear from some of our students and some of our recent albums on what their experience has been on studying entrepreneurship at Ashoka. Okay, so um, Arshi, may I request you to share your screen so that we can go through? Okay. All right, so um, let's go to the next. So there are a number of um, centers uh, that are there at uh, Ashoka. You may have probably seen them on our website. You have got an idea of, uh, you know, in addition to the various departments, what else we do at Ashoka. So for example, we have a center for behavioral studies. We have a center for gender and sexuality. We have a center which focuses on economic data and political data and so on. But the center for entrepreneurship is was amongst the first centers that got created at, on uh, the Ashoka campus. It's a center which started with the inception of the university. And it's truly the creative hub on campus uh, where we exchange ideas, work on ideas, and focus on creating something along with the whole process of uh, you know, ideating, uh, which you would do in a lot of other subjects that you're um, studying. So, We'll share more with you on what we do here. But one interesting question that comes about is why are we really studying entrepreneurship in a liberal arts environment? Where does it fit into liberal education? Because typically you would see a center for entrepreneurship or entrepreneurial studies or entrepreneurial centers, uh, e-cells um, being present at engineering colleges, MBA colleges, and yeah, those are the kind of universities or colleges that would have a focus on entrepreneurship. So why, does, why do we need to study entrepreneurship when we are studying uh, history and philosophy and sociology and English and so on? Okay. The core of this is a mindset which is called the entrepreneurial mindset, the entrepreneurial way of doing things, the entrepreneurial lifestyle. And that's the focus that we have throughout program 
in developing uh, our students into thinking entrepreneurially, thinking with a problem solving mindset, thinking with a perspective that what are the constraints, what are the opportunities and how can they do with the best that they have. So if I can use a word which all of us may be familiar with, it's a little bit of jugaad, right? So, but jugaad is not in the wrong sense, in the right sense. Can jugaad be used to solve the problems that you're facing every day? And uh, that's really a big part of what we deliver at the Center for Entrepreneurship, but through our courses, through our various other engagements and programs. And ultimately, uh, one thing that you will see as we go along is that entrepreneurship or learning or doing courses in entrepreneurship is not just about starting up. It is about having a mindset that you can deliver in everything that you do in life, whether you're doing a job or you're working with the government or you're managing your home, you will need this spirit of entrepreneurial thinking to deliver whatever you're doing. And that's the core of why we are teaching entrepreneurship in Liberal Arts. Next. Okay. So what's our vision? What's our focus? Why do we teach what we teach and so on? So our um, sort of vision is broken up into three different elements of what we deliver at the Center for Entrepreneurship. Inspire, inculcate, and incubate. Right. So we want to inspire, inculcate, and incubate game-changing ideas for India and the world. Now, if you look at this vision that we have, it's very focused. It's about developing ideas. It's not just focused about starting up and scaling up and making money through that. Right. So as long as you have an idea, as long as you have a thought that has value, the center is there for you. Right. So as far as our three verticals are concerned, under the Inspire vertical, we do a number of events on campus. We focus a lot on creating a culture for, of entrepreneurship on campus. So we have you know, events like the Startup Ashoka, we do boot camps, we do a lot of speaker series, and we are able to create this whole ethos which helps you get inspired with different stories, with different sort of uh, inspirational leaders who come forward and share with you the whole uh, purpose of you know, what, what they've created as part of their organizations, but also how they've made a difference through the impact that they can do. So social entrepreneurship also becomes a very, very important part of what we deliver at the center, right? So can you really use your skills to make a difference in this world? The next uh, I would actually talk about is incubate because, uh, sorry, inculcate, because uh, we also have a very, very uh, structured program which teaches you the skills required for entrepreneurial thinking. Uh, we have a very interesting menu of courses that you can do on, on in entrepreneurship. And these are not the typical courses that you would do in a BBA or an MBA. These are courses which are defined and structured to, to sort of dovetail into the liberal arts thinking that uh, you're going to be learning in different courses that you do at Ashoka in any, any, in any case. So how can you derive entrepreneurial thinking? From there and then I come to the slide and the courses you will see how uh, they, they have been structured and the last one is incubate where we actually work with you to create your idea into a startup so if you have an idea that you think has the potential of going out there in the market and becoming an idea which is larger than just your passion then we work with you and create that into a, a venture and we've um, so far incubated about 75 startups uh, at Ashoka. Next time. Okay. So an interesting thing that I talked about earlier was that entrepreneurship is a minor. It's not a major at, at Ashoka. So what do you do when you want to do entrepreneurship, right? Is there a particular type of a student who ends up doing entrepreneurship? The interesting answer is that when you come into a class uh, at the Center for Entrepreneurship, when you sit in my class and we're talking about design thinking and creativity and other things, you'll actually be sitting with people who are doing majors across the entire board, right? So I have a lot of students and very interestingly, one of the highest number of students who come and do entrepreneurship are students of English, right? Because they want to bring in their whole element of creative, creative writing, creativity, creative writing and so on. and they. They do very well in, in an entrepreneurial class. So there is psychology, of course, mathematics, computer science, the economics and finance, of course, because you know it 
kind of complements what they're studying there. But also more recently, we've got a lot of students who are studying biology and physics. In fact, some very interesting combinations. So there are students and a lot of them, not just one or two, who do biology, economics, and entrepreneurship. So one huge advantage of coming to Ashoka for, with the intention of doing entrepreneurship is that you can actually combine the spirit of entrepreneurship learning entrepreneurial thinking with these major subjects depending on where your interests lie but it's also the fusion of this the intersection of these subjects that make the output of what you create very exciting and very interesting and that's something that we look forward to we encourage we, we love to bring in people with almost contra disciplinary ideas into the center for entrepreneurship um, and we've had some great experiences with such people in the past. Next. So what's the structured program that we have, right? We have uh, what is called a minor in entrepreneurial leadership and strategy, and we have a concentration in entrepreneurial leadership and strategy. What's the difference? Uh, a minor requires you to do six courses uh, in entrepreneurship and a concentration requires you to do one, four courses. So depending on how much time you want to give entrepreneurship, how much time you have once you sort of finishing up your major requirements, you can choose whether you want to do a minor or a concentration. And we also have an interdisciplinary major with computer science, which is called uh, the uh, computer science and entrepreneurial leadership integrated uh, major. Um, next slide. Thank you. So how do you, what, what constitutes all of these, um, uh, majors and minors, that's a menu part, right? So we have these nine courses and more, which we offer. Uh, and uh, as you can see, the focus really is on, on cultivating an entrepreneurial mindset. How do you create impact through social entrepreneurship, governance entrepreneurship, which is as an entrepreneur, how do you move the government? Very, very interesting course is one of our, um, you know, most subscribed courses. Uh, and uh, we are able to actually demonstrate how uh, entrepreneurial skills are not just about creating ventures, but also about moving, uh, moving governments and how lawmakers can actually use entrepreneurial skills. We do a lot of creativity and design thinking kind of um, courses and, and programs. So this course really focuses on problem solving, understanding how you brainstorm and come up with solutions and how do those solutions get implemented. So the human-centered element. We move into new venture planning and marketing and finance, and these are all sort of slightly more skill-based courses. We learn the tools of entrepreneurship. We learn how different elements of entrepreneurship can be used in creating your venture, in marketing it, in running the numbers around it. Uh, managing value of ventures is again a very interesting course where we, um, you know, talk about how how financial financially you can manage the value of your ventures and and you know. In terms of evaluation, what are the games that can be played? Then we also have a few courses on leadership. So we focus on understanding how leaders get developed. So there's a whole element, a whole genre of courses around entrepreneurial leadership, right? So the leadership lessons from the road less traveled. And then of course, what is entrepreneurial leadership and how do you implement that into a strategy uh, company? So um, the exciting part of this is the faculty that we work with. And uh, as you can see on this slide and also the next one, where we have um, a lot of faculty members coming in from different parts of the country, different parts of the world to deliver these programs in entrepreneurship. We, we rely heavily on IM Ahmedabad to share some of their faculty members with us who come in and teach here at Ashoka. Uh, you, some of you may have heard of Rashmi Bansal, who's a uh, leading author. She's a best-selling author. She comes in and teaches the course on leadership lessons. Uh, we have uh, Professor Benedict who comes in from HEC Paris. And then of course, uh, there are a lot of other practitioners who come in and deliver programs, uh, structured programs which are curated for a liberal arts environment through the Center for Entrepreneurship. In addition to these faculty members, we also have a number of faculty members who come in as guest speakers and guest faculty at Ashoka. And uh, these are very illustrious names. These are people who come in with, of course, because they are known in their field. And I just have a few here, but uh, on this slide. But uh, you'll be happy to know that we host up to 100 
uh, speakers every year. Every year, we would have 100 people who would come in and talk about how they've uh, sort of used the spirit of entrepreneurship to make a difference. And that's what makes the whole program very, very powerful, very, very impactful. And, you know, you network with these people. So, for example, let's say Shashi Tharoor, who came into our class just a few weeks back, talked about how he'd love to take students from Ashoka uh, into uh, his office and work with him in, in, in managing his constituency and managing his uh, office here in Delhi. And there are people from Ashoka who worked with him. Similarly, there are students who are doing an internship with the Unis Center in Dhaka, uh, very much remotely now, but they're very closely involved and, and so on. So Ria is another uh, leader um, who's uh, now looked at getting involved in Ashoka in different ways. So there is, the engagement doesn't stop or end with just the speakers and the guest faculty coming in and delivering what they have, but they also at different levels get involved. Now, how do we deliver all of this? What is the story behind delivering such a curriculum, right? All of this is delivered through an experiential mode of learning. We, we look at case studies. We look at what's happening in the real world. There are no textbooks in these classes. There's nothing which is um, uh, almost a prescribed syllabus, right? Everything is based on what exists in the real world and how you can learn from that and how you actually use that experience into finding a solution to the problem that you have, right? And we, um, of course, rely on a lot of uh, cases and a lot of material that Harvard Business Publishing actually uh, puts out there. So we actually subscribe to their, uh, their, their cases and we uh, buy a lot of teaching material from them. And that's what's used in our classes to uh, deliver this whole experiential mode of learning. And, uh, many of you may know that uh, a lot of the MBA colleges uh, use this, at least the top ones. So the IIM Ahmedabads and IIM Bangalore's and ISBs would use similar material. Of course, the, the Ivy League, the top at the, the top uh, MBA institutes would use uh, all of these materials. So you get access to the best that there is in this genre of education. And uh, believe me, we get a lot of people from different parts uh, of the country and the world, and they are completely blown away with the quality of our classroom discussions because it's all about you know coming preparing a case coming to class talking about that experience sharing your perspective on that and then ideating along with the faculty on how you can address the problem further um, so that was the classroom part of it but the classroom doesn't end with the four walls right the classroom extends to the real world and we have uh, a whole bunch of courses, graded programs, like the Capstone program, the Winter Internship, Idea Labs, a lot of summer abroad programs, where uh, you can do real world experiential work, work with startups, work with leaders, get mentored by some of the entrepreneurs out there, uh, and also get uh, academic credit for it. So, um, you know, some of our students who are lined up to speak after me will share a little bit more about this. Uh, but this is the other part of uh, coming to Ashoka to understand how entrepreneurship is not just about you know, learning in the classroom, but really beyond it. So that's a picture from one of our trips to the Zomato office uh, here in Burgao. That's a picture of, of our gang uh, in Singapore um, when we went for an immersion uh, and partnered with the National University of Singapore. So the summer abroad programs also give you academic credit. We have partnered with a number of universities like NUS, Tel Aviv University, the Cape Town University, the, at the Lehigh NASDAQ Center in San Francisco. Um, they have structured programs. Some of them also come with financial aid and uh, you can spend um, a month or two in the summer with, in, in these universities doing programs and then we give you academic credit for it. This particular one that you've seen here is a program that we all actually went traveled to uh, Singapore together and, and you know, we're part of the classroom there along with faculty from NUS. Let's move on. Um, so in addition to the academic programs, we also do a lot of other programs that I talked about, you know, the whole Inspire vertical and uh, the Incubate vertical. So Startup Ashoka is one of our biggest events. It's a 24 hours nonstop uh, hackathon program that we've done. It's also one of the most exciting events that happen on campus is we 
ideate through the night, create uh, um, you know, different teams, brainstorm on ideas. And then finally, the next day, we pitch our ideas to a group of investors. Some of them get funding, some of them get a mentoring, and some of them actually sort of merge together as different ideas emerge and create something. So that's one exciting part of what we do with the Startup Ashoka. The Entrepreneur in Residence program is an incubation program for Ashoka students and alumni. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very intensive program which allows you to stay back on campus after you have completed your education or the final year of your education and uh, work on your venture full time. Uh, we also have the AIM Smart City Accelerator. This is amongst the first smart city accelerators in the country. We partnered with ISV in Hyderabad as well as Microsoft to create uh, this particular accelerator. Uh, and this, this allows a lot of people from outside to come and work at Ashoka as well for their startups. So we create a whole community of startups uh, in the campus. Next one. Okay, so yeah, that's a picture of us at the IIM Ahmedabad campus uh, where we were all um, getting in, you know, attending classes along with uh, the CIIE there, the Center for Entrepreneurship at IIM Ahmedabad, where, uh, where we were hosted. And we worked on a lot of different uh, concepts along with some of the startups there as well. Okay, let's go on. And then we have, of course, you know, if you create something and you've got a good idea that sort of moves to the next level, there is a lot of opportunity for you in the media. We create, we work with our startups to actually, um, you know, amplify their outreach uh, into the whole media uh, world and social media and so on. So we've got a, our fair share of recognition. In fact, Harsh is going to be speaking to you. We'll talk about his venture at Unify and uh, how it's gone from uh, you know, milestone to milestone. Okay. All right. So uh, how will you use entrepreneurship in the future? What does it mean to you? What kind of careers you can create out of studying entrepreneurship at Ashoka? Um, that's, that's why you're all coming to a university, right? So let me actually pass this on to some of my students, some of the students who've done entrepreneurship at Ashoka so that they can share their journey of what they're going to be doing and how their ventures or their jobs or uh, you know what they want to do with their education. So uh, before we take on any questions, I'm going to ask Adit. Adit, are you with us? Adit, uh, would you like to uh, share your thoughts for a few minutes? Yes, Dr. Priyank, thank you so much. Uh, so good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Adit Goel. I graduated. <coughs> in economics and finance in my three years at Ashoka. And I'm currently pursuing my Ashoka scholars degree with a minor in entrepreneurship. Uh, I was actually, in, I was actually always intrigued by the term entrepreneurship, but I was, but it was never something that I thought I would actively pursue. But 2020 definitely has been a year of expecting the unexpected. Exactly five months back, I got together with a couple of my friends and started a personalized digital gifting service called FET. And well, five months later, all I can say is that they have been one of the most, they have been few of the most rewarding months of my life. FET was actually started with the, inten with the intention to fill a gap in the market, a gap in the market where we felt with everything moving online, why should gifts be left behind? So we aim to answer that perfect gift question that everyone more often than not has. The biggest challenge in my mind when I started uh, approximately uh, around July was how would I balance college with managing operations for this venture. But luckily, in my case, the biggest challenge turned out to be the biggest opportunity as I decided to take all entrepreneurship courses this semester. Often I had heard the statement that, uh, you know, entrepreneurship is not something that can be taught. It's something that comes from within. Even though I do believe that you have to have the drive from within. Uh, I have realized one of the most important factors in entrepreneurship is guidance. Uh, the three courses I have taken till now have been so practical in the way they have been taught that they have been structured that even though we were learning mostly about other companies, more often than not, I could always apply them to my journey at FET. Some of the examples of this was in one, when, in one of the courses, as Dr. Priyank talked about venture planning and strategy, we learned about all these business frameworks, one of them being the business model canvas for our ventures, which actually really helped me structure the entire process for FET. 
in another course, entrepreneurial marketing and finance, I look at diverse ways you can segment the audience to actually come to to actually reach your exact target audience and make a structured marketing plan for the for a company. So these are the small things that you know, like in the classroom, have helped me really structure the entire process in these five months as I move forward with with this journey of pet. The practicality in which entrepreneurship is taught. uh is with case studies as as was mentioned in the presentation and actually stepping into the shoes of the entrepreneur rather than just reading some you know how to be an entrepreneur book is actually what really distinguishes the entire process of entrepreneurship at ashoka in the next few months in fact as was mentioned as the idea lab i actually ta- plan to take these offerings by the cfe one step further and actually have a, by actually having a course completely designed on the basis of uh, how i plan to scale up the venture I think these constant steps of motive, innovation, and interest shown by the mentors make being an entrepreneurship at Ashoka an extremely exciting proposition. Because at the end of the day, I mean, what is entrepreneurship? According to me, it's just a way of thinking. You necessarily don't have to have something of your own to actually take courses on it. You just have to have that constant will, a constant will to ask these unasked questions, and more often than not, find solutions to them. because even today 5 months down the road we definitely don't have all the solutions we started fet with we have a small team of 8 people today constantly thinking of coming up with new ways to help people celebrate once in a lifetime occasions by providing them completely personalized gifts and actually gifting them memories rather than just some materialistic gifts brought off the internet our aim in fact is to help people celebrate life in ways big and small by becoming the one stop shop for all thoughtful meaningful and personalized gifts in india hopefully by continuing this journey of entrepreneurship at ashoka you will hear all of you here will hear a lot more about fet from your friends and family in the coming times thank you thank you adit um exciting um startup that you've created and adit recently presented his business model canvas in one of our classes just actually just a few weeks back and got a great feedback on that so um, adit i'm as excited about your venture as you are and uh, thank you for sharing that with us okay next i'm going to invite sindura sindura is uh, is a recent alum and uh, is doing some exciting things with her entrepreneurial education so sindura over to you thank you priyank sir hello everyone i'm sindura ganesh uh, ug batch of 2019 and asp batch of uh, 2020 i graduated with a bachelor's degree in economics and finance and i did a minor in psychology and a concentration in entrepreneurship in my asp so i think a couple of things for me um that entrepreneurship helped me in so right now i'm working at mxv consulting i uh, got the job through the campus placement it's been just over 6 months that i've been working and in terms of the work front i think that entrepreneurship has helped me in terms of just the way to approach a problem because just as adit was also also mentioning in terms of how the structured approach or a case study methodology because consulting as you would all know is heavily based on case studies problem solving how to make the entire process very human centric because after all on the other side there is a client who is coming to us with a problem and thinking and reconnecting that with something like a design thinking approach or reconnecting it with some sort of a framework that we have used in one of the courses or maybe looking at the way that i tackled the interviews all of this has a lot to do with the different things that i learned uh, in the four courses that i did and in terms of apart from that i also started a little venture called small arts which where i i'm an artist and right now i'm doing a freelance artist sort of a thing where i do custom paintings this thing started in ashoka itself and i did three um sales on campus for which out of which one of them was also a heart was or an exhibition was hosted by the entrepreneurship network so they also provide a platform to encourage and support your little ventures however small or large they are and that ties it back to having an entrepreneurial mindset because there's constantly something that you are thinking of doing something new and i think that has applied both in ashoka as well as in my workplace because 
I have taken on multiple initiatives at MXV as well apart from my project work where i am trying something new i'm uh, since the company is also growing they're very supportive of having new initiatives and i think the entrepreneurship courses have really helped me think that way so it's just that way of always thinking of something new and making sure that you're taking those risks and those leap of those leaps of faith and in terms of the courses that i did one of the courses that even priyank sir touched upon was uh, a summer abroad program and i was one of the students who attended the nus accelerator program i think that was one of the most fantastic experiences that i had uh, all thanks to the cfe to have hosted it i went with a bunch of um, not acquaintances i wasn't really friends with any of them so new bunch of people from ashoka itself got to meet diverse uh, cultural background like a lot of people from nus itself uh, from bombay from various parts of india and abroad and we got to work on live projects where we interacted with actual singapore startups understood the ecosystem and also interacted with many experts in the singapore entrepreneurship ecosystem as well and directly with the founders with um, you know some of the really well known people in singapore and just honing those entrepreneurial skills but in a completely different environment altogether getting to know more people i think it is something that everyone should do uh, if they are taking up any entrepreneurship course because it was definitely an experience of a lifetime and overall in uh the other courses that i've done like uh, priyank sir's design thinking course was extremely memorable because it had so much to do with experiential learning it was all learn on the go it wasn't just theoretical saying okay these are some of the approaches and this is how you apply it but it was actually us experiencing how to think out, outside the box how to make sure that we're using that thinking in our everyday lives and i think i have a lot to owe to the entire entrepreneurship faculty to the entire uh, cfe because i've created some excellent memories it has helped me at every step of the way um and if there are any other questions please feel free to connect and i would love to answer any of it so thank you so much thank you sindra thank you for sharing your journey and your stories and and um, i hope that you have inspired some of the young aspirants who are looking at coming in uh one last story um and this one is uh an exciting one that uh, is going to come all the way from lucknow harsh you're, you're still in lucknow right yes sir uh, all right so over to you harsh uh, blow us away with the story of edunify um uh, hello everyone so uh, thank you priyank sir for having me for this session uh, so i'll just start with a little introduction about myself so uh, i'm harsh karam chandani currently founder and cto at ed unify i graduated from ashoka university with a degree in computer science and entrepreneurial leadership uh, last year in 2019 and uh, since then i've been working full time on my venture which is currently based out of lucknow but we have a pan india presence so to give you an idea about my venture uh, so at ed unify we have a web platform called uniform application which is uniform app dot in so currently it is india's largest school discovery platform so every month we help more than 3.5 lakh parents visiting our website to help find information about 1.2 lakh schools whose uh, information is listed on our website and on the other hand we help schools uh, increase admissions and connect to prospective parents online that are visiting our platform so if you let's say search for best schools in various cities some of you are based out of in, diff in different cities so be it delhi uh, lucknow patna mumbai different parts of the country if you search for these schools on google you'll see our website coming up so this is what we essentially do we act as a matchmaker between schools and parents uh, so that is enough about my uh, my venture and i like to talk about my startup story and it started uh, even before ashoka ashoka when i was about to join ashoka i came for a campus tour i looked at the center for entrepreneurship i was already excited to you know do some uh, something of my own i already had such interest and i was excited because ashoka had such a thing as a center for entrepreneurship so i just wanted to know what kind of opportunities were there 
and throughout my three years at Ashoka, I did everything possible that could be done on campus associated with entrepreneurship. So starting with the courses, I did or I did complete my minor uh, in entrepreneurship at Ashoka. Then I went on to uh, do. Uh, I went on to be part of the ESL. So one of the founding, uh, uh, the first and the second year of the ESL, which is Entrepreneurship Network at Ashoka, the ENA. I was part of that as well. I participated in on-campus startup events like Startup Ashoka. So I was part of three Startup Ashokas. Uh, two, twice uh, and all three, I was a participant. I even helped organize one. So I did everything possible on campus. I also was part of the entrepreneurship capstone, which is essentially you getting credit for working on your startup, which is something I thought is com is very unique compared to other universities in this country where I'm working on my startup already. I'm working on it full time. I started working on it in my third year full time and we even registered a company and everything. So I was getting credits to work on the very venture I wanted to pursue even after graduation and I was getting those while I was pursuing my uh, graduation at Ashoka. So that was one of the best things for me and being part of just the courses, the classes, the uh, again the capstone program where I was mentored by Priyank sir and then even after I graduated from Ashoka I was part of the entrepreneur in residence program which is basically the incubation program of Ashoka where I was part of this five month long program where we had multiple sessions where I met mentors from different fields who helped me with various aspects of starting up. Uh, there was support throughout the way, regular updates. Uh, till date, I get support from the Center for Entrepreneurship. If I if I want help with something, I can anytime I can reach out to the center. I can re reach out to Priyank sir and you know tell them okay, this is something I need help with as part of my startup. Uh, can you suggest something? And he is always available. And that is uh, one of the best parts of being associated with the center is that. From the day one when you enter Ashoka to even years after you're out of Ashoka, you have that kind of, uh, if you're starting up, if you're the field of entrepreneurship, even if you're not starting up your, uh, in your professional career, you'll always have support from the center in any and every way possible. Uh, even if they, can, they are the ones who cannot directly help you, they'll connect you with some people in their own networks who can help you. Uh, Recently, I needed help with uh, one aspect of my startup, which was some uh, outreach, some media outreach, and I reached out to the center, and they definitely helped me, uh, uh, you know, establish my media presence, reach out to prospective customers, people who read about startups online. So, what I realized in my startup journey throughout Ashoka was that. Uh, you know, a lot of people talk about the academic side of it. I want to uh, talk about the other side of it. When you're actually starting up, when be it a social startup or a for-profit startup or a technology startup, you will get the support you need from Ashoka. You will, uh, if you want to work, I, for the longest time in my, I think, whole of my third year, I used to work out of the center. So center was sort of my pseudo office where I used to work at my startup. My partner was on ground in Lucknow and I used to work from Ashoka. So everything and anything I could have possibly needed for starting up my venture, I got that from the center and... Uh, even the faculty, when I was doing the courses, I used to directly apply those concepts. I used to discuss my actual venture with these professors and I used to tell them, okay, this is what I'm working on. This is the stage we are at. This is what we need help with. And that is where they came in and they helped us. So I think if you, if some of, uh, you know, I, some students, some prospective students also approached me later on asking me, you know, how is Ashoka for entrepreneurship? And I told them the same thing that I am saying today that, uh, if you want to start, if you already have an idea, even if you don't, you're just interested and intrigued by the whole field, you think maybe you foresee yourself do, becoming a startup founder. I think Ashoka is probably one of the best options in the whole country because uh, the kind of unique offerings, the kind of unique faculty, the kind of unique programs like Startup Ashoka, like getting credits for your own startup, the incubation after the after your graduation and the continuous support that you get at uh, at Ashoka at the Center for Entrepreneurship, you do not get any place here as that I know of. Uh, so I think uh, I would like to keep it short and that is it from my end. Uh, thank you Priyank sir again for having me. Thank you Harsh. Thank you for giving us so much of credit for what you've created. Um, you know, we're very, very proud of uh, your uh, creation and we hope that, you know, you go hit many more milestones. So, ladies and gentlemen, they, he, Harsh has been able to create the largest school discovery platform in the country in, in less than about a year after graduating. And he was working, of course, on the, on the venture while he was at Ashoka. 
Uh, but uh, well done, Harsh. Thank you for sharing your journey. Okay, so I guess with that, um, I'm gonna ask Trisha to see if we have any questions and uh, we'd be happy to open the floor. Um, so I'll just start asking the questions that we've received from our audience. Sure. The first question is, is Ashoka the right place for someone who wants to study business? Okay, good, great question. Um, Ashoka is not a business school. And I think that's something that we have to see in the right perspective. It's a school which will give you a multidisciplinary perspective. Now, what you do with that multidisciplinary perspective is completely in your hands, right? So whether you want to go into business, you want to go into uh, you know, a creative world of uh, like entrepreneurial uh, ideas that we talked about, or you want to go into the government, or you want to work with the NGO, or you want to go into higher education, those are decisions you have to take. But it's, it's not a business school. The schools either. So there is a certain um, type of education that you would get in a business school, but here you would get elements of that complementing a lot of the liberal arts education. Um, the next question is about the Center for Entrepreneurship and how it helps connect entrepreneurs to mentors. So um, maybe I should ask Harsh to talk about that. Harsh, do you want to talk about some of the mentors that you worked with and uh, the experiences that you got from there? Okay, I think Harsh is one of. So um, I'll, I'll take that on. So, um, so we do have a fairly large panel of uh, mentors that we work with. We also have a lot of Ashoka founders uh, would probably know that Ashoka is a collective philanthropy and has about close to 120 founders who've contributed financially uh, to Ashoka. But in addition to contributing financially, these are all entrepreneurs who also would, are very generous with their time. So we have a very large group of, uh, of uh, mentors who are accessible to us. And depending on the kind of inputs that you need, whether you need a subject matter input or you need a specific uh, sort of a business specific or a generic input, we'd be able to connect you with the, with the right mentor. And you also then help you move from a mentor to a different mentor. So very often, you know, at different stages of the startup, you, you need different types of inputs. So we help you uh, work with, you know, getting access to a whole array of mentors. I don't know if that was the question. I hope that's, uh, that answers. Is studying entrepreneurship only for budding entrepreneurs? Okay. Sindhura, why don't you take that on? Because, you know, you, you're an example of um, how you used uh, entrepreneurial education to create what you created on campus, but also moving on and, and getting into a, a, a very typical consulting corporate job. So uh, tell us about that a little bit. Yeah. I think absolutely not. It's not necessary because in one of our courses, uh, if I remember correctly, this was leadership lessons from the road less traveled. And in um, this course also, I remember that it's not necessary to have an idea. Like you don't have to force yourself to have an idea to actually take entrepreneurship or to do these courses because more than anything, I think it is just the mindset that matters and that is what is inculcated. Uh, I think that I value the most just in terms of how you approach any problem actually. So even if you're looking for a job, uh, which most people do after college, it definitely helps be it in your interviews, be it in terms of how you tackle uh, work itself in your uh, entire corporate environment. I do not think that it specifically has to do with you have to create something by the end of it. Uh, because leadership lessons, just entrepreneurial soft skills, like just a soft skills training. Um, and it's not just limited to uh, growing your venture. It is also for something that it's a long term thing is what I see it as. And it's definitely beneficial for a workspace as well, as I'd mentioned when I when I was speaking. So let me just add to that, Sindhura, thank you for sharing that. Um, see, the word, what we are delivering is entrepreneurial leadership and strategy. That includes a big element of how you're going to lead your life in everything that you do and how you're going to strategize to find solutions, right? Then if you look at 
just this element and all of that is coming from the word entrepreneurial which is you will work with a changing environment you will work with the limited resources that are available to you and you will collaborate with people so what these are the fundamentals that we are delivering and these are fundamentals that are required in everything and anything that you do in life so that is the spirit with which we deliver this education having said that and this is you know people from entrepreneurship and people from the people who done our courses go into all kinds of jobs ngos uh, corporate jobs um you know even the government for that matter uh, but an interesting little piece that i'd like to share with you is that uh, mckinsey who, which often is treated as a uh, considered as a as a leading recruiter on campuses also recruits from ashoka and the last few years that it's recruited it's recruited people who've done courses in entrepreneurship so it it does value what we're delivering in, in the classroom and uh, you know it's just a testimony that it's these are skills that are be that will be useful in any corporate job or any other kind of jobs that you will do a couple of people have this doubt that do you need to know math to study entrepreneurship <laughs> um I, I think you should have a little bit of mathematical sense, but uh, no, you can you can sort of you don't have to be maths need not be a strength. So um, yeah, and uh, except for the two finance courses, the others are not quant heavy. So you can you can get away with being uh, a little weak in maths. But Trisha, you you've experienced all our courses. I'm going to throw this question back at you. What's your view? Um. you other like professor said other than the two finance based courses which will obviously have numbers but not the kind of math you see in school you're equipped with everything you need in those courses itself it's not really math heavy it's all about the mindset and how you get to that mindset and how you can inculcate it in your life so that really doesn't have to do with numbers uh, as much so you don't really need math even in your 11th and 12th to do well in entrepreneurship So uh, our next question is about the interdisciplinary major, which is computer science and entrepreneurship. Where does entrepreneurship fit in with computer science? So the whole idea of doing this interdisciplinary major is to help you create technology-based startups and help you create use technology to scale fast in your venture. entrepreneur major you need to do only four courses in the entrepreneur in entrepreneur station with any other major so let's say you're doing history as a major you decide courses in entrepreneurship you can technically uh, do a history and entrepreneur major not just computer science it's just that because computer science is something which we we you know we see a lot of startups coming out from the tech world we do want them to see, start seeing a perspective of how they can scale up their technology idea or the computer science idea uh from a startup perspective the next question is about how many startups have been incubated at ashoka or created at ashoka and what what kind of field are they from are they from a particular kind of field is it only tech startups or are there different kinds so like i mentioned we've got about 75 startups uh, in you know over the last 4 5 years 5 years that we've been incubating some have done well some have done not so well some have died uh, as a startup uh, but those are sort of uh, true for any other incubator uh, program that's running in the country today or for that matter anywhere in the world um they do come from all diverse fields education is slightly uh, heavier in what we do they are not necessarily tech startups remember they are you know all of these students who are working at ashoka they don't necessarily come from a tech background so um there's a lot of social impact startups that come about who wants to do something which is a completely offline idea so let me give you an example uh one startup which is doing very well is called gudgudi it started by two uh, women who studying at ashoka and what they do is to create very uh, different play spaces play areas for children 
right? So they use all kinds of different materials to create playgrounds and outdoor open spaces. So they are designers, they've, they've got a design sense, they, they're, in a, they're creating play areas for children and that's their startup and they're doing very well and they are now looking at getting funded and all, the, all those kind of things. So very, very different kinds of startup and then you have Harsh's startup, which is looking at school education, but then has a huge tech play. There are startups which are looking at, you know, automating the whole world of stock trading. Now that's not a new idea, but they're looking at some ideas on how um, artificial intelligence can help you give stock recommendations and things like that. Um, there are also startups which come very, very strong social impact kind of things. For example, there are social entrepreneurs who looked at starting up libraries for children um, in, in government schools. They've created different revenue models around it so that they're sustainable. They're not necessarily uh, dependent on funding and things like that. So all, all combinations, uh, Trisha, of kind of startups that and I think just to carry on from that, when these startups are created, who are the investors that are investing in them? Are there any tie-ups with any incubators or venture capital firms or companies that are coming in and helping these entrepreneurs with funding specifically? Uh, good question. We do have, uh, like I said, our founders uh, network who are all, a lot of them actually invest in startups. So we do connect um, our uh, budding entrepreneurs with the entire sort of network of founders and they look at uh, very objectively whether they would like to fund them or not. Um, the interesting uh, part also is that when you become a part of the entrepreneur in residence program, we do give you a small stipend to sustain your venture. So that's, you know, just a sustenance money, but uh, we do also support you financially so that you can stay on campus, live on campus, get an office, get a place to stay, get a little stipend. The only thing that we ask you to focus on is your venture 24 by 7. And uh, so we do support startups through uh, the entrepreneur residence program. Uh, but we don't, as a university, we don't directly invest in any of our startups. Um, but we have enough access to all different types of funders and funding agencies to get them the funding that, that is required. So, yeah. Can someone design their own website or application even if they've not done computer science as their major? I'm sure they can. In today's time, it's a skill that I guess all of us should learn and know and be good at. So, um, yeah, if, if you've not done computer science but you still have a flair for it, um, you should be able to uh, get your hands around it. In the classes, for the guest lecturers and the guest speakers, how closely do students actually interact with these big names? Um, actually, very, very closely. Uh, very often, these these events are all, all hosted, organized by the students. Um, very often, we are the, the guest speak faculty would spend time before and after these talks with the students. A lot of times, uh, you know, we in we dovetail this into a lunch session post the talk so they would hang around and have lunch together. I'm talking about the offline mode where we physically were all on campus. In the online mode, um, there are various opportunities for doing internships with these um, with these you know, speakers and celebrities, so to say, who come into uh, our classroom virtually. Um, but more than that, I think if there is a specific need that you have and a specific requirement to be connected and to be recommended and to be positioned with any of these people because, you know, given that they end up coming and spending time with us, we also as faculty members becoming, we become close to them and we, they, they hold our opinion in, in somewhat decent regard. So we're able to recommend uh, our students to work with them and, and, and get that experience as well. So that networking also continues after we are done with just the talk. Moving on to social entrepreneurship, what are some examples specifically in this field that we've seen at Ashoka? Okay, so one is uh, that I talked about was this whole mobile library thing. There are uh, there are two startups which are working on mental health, um, specifically for school students. Then there is one startup which is working on teaching English to children. There's one startup in working on menstrual health. Actually, two startups working on menstrual health and menstrual education um, uh, in, again, rural areas. There are other startups which are just generally working on um, 
hygiene, cleanliness, ensuring. So, for example, there are a group of students who worked in one of the class projects on cleaning up a Savarpur village, which is the village ad adjoining our university, and trying to create a system where uh, they don't they, they have an incentive, a sort of inborn incentive to keep the village clean. So there are lots of uh, areas that social entrepreneurs actually uh, do some interesting work. There's been a group of students who did some work uh, with the NGO in the Himalayas and trying to clean up the mountains and making sure that there is responsible tourism happening and things like that. Uh, we, we partner with a number of NGOs as well. So you know, they, they open their doors to us in different ways. Students can volunteer with them, work with them, get involved with them and so on. So, for example, Goonj, uh, uh, Anshugupta's organization, which is a famous NGO, does a lot of work with Ashoka. So, yeah, there are various opportunities for you to do social entrepreneurship and work with social entrepreneurs. Both. Is there any kind of panel that assesses these startups and what has the success rate been? So, uh, yes, we do bring in uh, external faculty um, to assess the, um, the impact of these startups and uh, you know, how well they're doing, how we, we'd like them to move forward. But you know, one thing that I want to share with you here is that we're not uh, focused on making sure that you know, we give you a grade on how well you're doing. I think we give you more on guidance on how you're doing and then you know, help you to pivot and help you to move forward with your idea. And uh, yes, there have been times that we've asked uh, startups to shut down because we just feel that the idea doesn't have enough merit and uh, they would completely be um, wasting their time or you know, their time could be better invested in other ideas and opportunities. So we are, we are sometimes, we have to give that feedback and ask startups to look at different uh, things, uh, look at things differently. Will there be support for a student who's come in and wants to pursue their family business after Ashoka? Lovely, great question. Uh, we love family businesses and we love to support family businesses. And, uh, you know, not too many people are happy. To, you know, a lot of people come and say, I have a family business. I don't want to get into it because I don't think it's cool enough for me. And uh, we really help them look at their family business very differently, how, they, how we can build in a whole innovation system into the family business, um, what, what they can do with the platform that's available to them as a family business. So um, my answer there is that yes, I think family business uh, students have a huge opportunity to learn, um, open their mind, open their horizons and watch their family business can do and of course you know i'm sure that a lot of them come with a background where the family business is doing very well so how do they sustain that growth and then you know move forward with the goals of the family and we've had a lot in the past also so it's not something that we're going to be doing for the first time could you please elaborate a little bit more for the audience on how ashoka supports the experiential learning part of entrepreneurship, in specific, the summer abroad programs and interactions? So we've partnered with uh, universities who would offer you a course in the summer. Um, these programs are two, two kinds. So they have sort of two elements to it. One is the academic element. So for example, when you go to NUS or Tel Aviv University or Lehigh, you would attend an academic program, which is delivered by the faculty there. But there's also an element of looking at the entrepreneurship ecosystem in that country or in that city. So let me give you an example. When uh, we partner with Tel Aviv University, um, you don't just sit in the classroom and attend the, the course being delivered to you, but you actually go and experience the whole Israeli entrepreneurship system. You go and, you know, meet startups, you attend events at the local incubator, you partner with they, you know, we take you around and show you how the whole investment ecosystem works and the whole cultural experience and everything. So, you know, it's a little bit of culture. It is a little bit of entrepreneurship ecosystem. And then, of course, the whole structured um, education, that entrepreneurship education that you get. All of these. And we do this for all our uh, study abroad programs. So it's a good experience. And uh, it's something which sort of um, gives you a very holistic uh, 
development there. And then of course, it's up to you how much you networking you want to uh, take forward and uh, learn from the networking, keep that network going over a period of time and so on. But enough opportunities created for, for all of these things. Um, thank you so much for answering all these questions, Dr. Narayan. We've come towards the end of our time. So any last words, anything you'd like to wrap up this session with? Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Trisha. So my uh, sort of closing thoughts here are that uh, this is truly a unique opportunity to learn, to study an entrepreneurial way. Share with you is that we are amongst the first few universities to offer entrepreneurship with liberal arts. So imagine doing history and philosophy and sociology and anthropology and entrepreneurship. And that's the power of the interdisciplinary learning. That's the power of making disciplines collide. And uh, I invite all of you to come in and experience this collision and explosion of ideas that happens when contradisciplinary ideas come together. So all the best for your journey as you apply and go through um, your application process. And we would love to welcome you and see you in our classrooms at Ashoka. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Narayan, for your time this evening. Um, just a few points before we wrap up today's session. Thank you everyone so much for attending and giving us your time. Before you leave, please do take a minute to share your feedback with us. The link has been provided to you in the chat box. Uh, some information about our upcoming webinars. So our next webinar is on undergraduate admissions, the application process assessments and interview with the admissions team. This will be held on Friday, the 18th of December at 5 p.m. Once again, the registration link has been provided to you in the chat box itself. We would also like to extend an invitation for our upcoming webinar, Why History at Ashoka, which will be in conjunction with Mahesh Rangarajan, who is the head of the history department and also a professor of history and environmental studies at Ashoka. This webinar will take place on Tuesday, which is the 22nd of December at 6 p.m. The registration link is in the chat box. Please do join us. Lastly, I would like to remind our audience that round two of applications for the undergraduate program are open. The last date to submit your application to be considered in this round would be 11th of January, 2021. You can start your application at apply.ashoka.edu.in and please do also visit our website www.ashoka.edu.in for complete details on the admissions process and timeline. If you have any other queries or doubts or would simply like to know more about Ashoka's unique interdisciplinary undergraduate program, you can always write to us at apply at ashoka.edu.in or call us on the number that has now been provided on your screen. Thank you so much for joining us this evening and take care.